Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today I have an interesting little product to take a look at. It's interesting and it is indeed little. So this is the Abernick RG353V, and this is a three and a half inch portable emulating game console. And this was provided by LitNXT.com, which was kind enough to provide this for the purposes of this review. Just to be perfectly clear, this was provided by Lit nxt.com and I did not personally purchase it. However, my reviews on the device will remain my own. Before we dive into specifications, we need to address emulation. My recommendation is that if you don't own the game, the grounds of emulation are a bit shaky. At least that's what I would say, except I'm going to introduce more complexity into this, and that's the fact that there was a study done by the Video Game History Foundation that found out that 87% of video games released before 2010 are not commercially available on modern platforms. So that means some of these games, this is literally going to be the only way that you will ever be able to play them. So with that being said, let's dive into this. So this unit comes in four different colors and you can see the ones that are marked off here and I'll put some pictures up because I think they all look really sharp. It was kind of difficult to choose which one I wanted. It does sport a 3.5 inch 640 by 480 4 by 3 display. So it is going to give a very classic feel. You can obviously see that they're going for the kind of transparent Game Boy color vibe. And then we've got a bit of a Super Famicom uh, button layout here with all the different colors. On the inside of this thing, we've got a quad core A35, which is able to go up to about 1.8 gigahertz. 2 gigabytes of low power DDR4 uh, RAM, and that's at 1056 megahertz. There's a 32 gigabyte eMMC running all the operating systems, and you've got lots of storage capacity, which we'll check out in just a second, and a 3200 milliamp battery, which theoretically should last for six hours. Now, this specific variant, the V, has both Android 11 and a Linux operating system working on it. And apparently, you can do wired or wireless projection. Uh, from this thing. If we take a look on the inside, we have a charging cable and a tempered glass screen protector here that I'm going to install later, and then a user's manual that talks about the uh, settings on how to get it into Linux, the other functions, streaming controller mode, all that good stuff is written here in English, and on the other side, I believe we have Chinese. So the console itself has a D pad a function button, start, select, uh, X, A, B, Y, and then two analog sticks with click. We have a single speaker here front facing, and on the back we have two rows of triggers. On the front we have a means of charging, we have a mini HDMI, and then we have a or headphone out jack. Very, very classic. Over here we have what I believe is a volume rocker, and then we have a power and a reset button. And then over here we have two cards. Now, depending on which model you get, um, you'll have one card of one size and one in the other. So they all come with a 16 gigabyte uh, card here. And then this version has a 128 gigabyte card, but you can get ones up to 256. So I appreciate that they give you the cards so you don't have to go out and buy those as soon as you get this. So with that being said, let's go ahead and turn this thing on for the first time. It's a pretty nice looking screen, no question there. All right, so we are greeted to this screen here, which gives last played, a vertical arcade, and then a whole bunch of different systems you can choose from. And it looks like, by the numbers in the bottom, that there may already be games on this. I won't speak to the, the legal issues behind games that may or may not be commercially available. I will be playing some games that I personally own in my collection. I'm going to go ahead and do some testing with this, and when I cut back, it'll be after I have done some extensive work with it. All right, folks, I actually have a lot more to say about this than I thought I would, and that's uh, led to about two weeks of testing on and off. One thing that I will say right off the hop is that the included full SD cards uh, of games, it's not legal in the strictest sense of the word, and the other thing, too, is that it makes it really difficult to find the games that you actually want to play on the device. My recommendation to you would be to actually clear the card 
and just put the games that you might actually own in some way, shape, or form on it so that you can play it on the go. The other thing that I will mention is that this is a device that if you're actually going to use it to its fullest, you need to know a lot about how emulation works. This does not hold your hand. I grew up knowing what emulation was and using it to play some games when I was a kid, so I know how this thing works. And uh, for those of you that are curious, it runs RetroArch, by the way, that if you are looking on buying one of these, read up on RetroArch, understand how it works, its features, how to tweak it, and all of that, or you might find it to be a bit of a frustrating experience. The inclusion of the Android Dual Boot, for the most part, I actually found to be rather pointless. So you can obviously access all the emulators from within uh, the Android system. However, it's not the same instance as RetroArch. So that means that anything that you do on one side is not transferred over to the other. So in my mind, it's pick one or the other. And I'll have more to say about the Android system in a little bit. The other thing that I'll mention is the hardware. So the screen is beautiful, like that is perfectly fine. The front buttons here, if they were any smaller, I would say it would be an issue. My biggest gripe is actually the buttons on the back of the device. So these are your R1 and R2 and your L1 and L2. And I have found that you really have to almost make a, a claw motion. And it's not as comfortable, of course, as the original controller, which had uh, a considerably more relaxed style. So this would not be my first pick in terms of form factor. If you are planning on playing anything that has uh, more complex controls. Speaking of complex controls and emulation, uh, we need to talk about the N64, which is probably one of the more hardware demanding emulations running on this thing, and it doesn't do very well. Uh, sound drop uh, is very, very common, so even though you might get some smooth frame rates, uh, it's pretty clear that this thing is not able to keep up with things like GoldenEye or The Legend of Zelda, uh, Ocarina of Time. And the other thing that I noted is that trying to map the joystick to play something like GoldenEye, for me, I don't know what I was doing wrong, but what it was an absolute nightmare. I would be moving forward and all of a sudden I would also be looking down at the same time, which shouldn't happen. Uh, that shouldn't be happening unless like one of these other buttons are, are being pressed. And overall, the experience was really, really frustrating and I was getting uh, sound pops and things like that. in terms of like Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, uh, anything that was pretty much not 3D, it did perfectly fine with. So that is one thing uh, that I do want to point out is that the hardware limitations are, are real and you are being provided with software in some instances that will not run on this hardware.
Getting back to the software, one of the features of this that's advertised is a wireless uh, streaming, uh, so you can play it on your TV wirelessly. And I'll be upfront, it just is not an acceptable experience. Uh, so trying to do it under RetroArch, the configuration system, I couldn't get it to work properly. It also didn't accept Wi-Fi passwords with really complex characters, so I couldn't even connect to my Wi-Fi uh, through RetroArch on this particular build. And then in Android, when I did it, it was successful, but the there was two problems. First, the emulation speed was wrong. Uh, it was playing the games too fast, and you could tell immediately by listening to the music because the tempo was completely off. And then the other thing was the delay. Uh, there was a significant delay in uh, pressing the buttons and then having a character do something on the screen. So if you weren't looking down at the device, which completely defeats the purpose of streaming it, then it wasn't uh, an experience that I would recommend at all. If you are going to use this on a larger display, use the mini HDMI port in the front and plug it in. One last thing I'll quickly mention about is build quality. It's okay. Uh, some of the, I would say just about everything on the front feels uh, good and responds well. The F button here, very, very loose, and you'll be using that a lot to go in and out of emulation and pulling up menus. And then the uh, back trigger buttons uh, are very, very loose. And that just has to do with uh, how it's built on the inside. It could have been built a little bit better, but this is being offered at a price point. So there is that. The other thing to note, of course, is that there is only one speaker that fires uh, straight toward you, which for a console this size, like what else can you really expect? But if you like stereo sound in some of your games, that's just simply not gonna happen. Overall, ladies and gentlemen, I think that this is an interesting machine because I'm not 100% sure who exactly it's for. I suspect that it is for uh, enthusiasts like myself that already have a good chunk of the original hardware and the original games because we love this stuff. And it's pretty clear that RetroArch, at least a flavor of it being used, does mean that you are going to have a lot of control and a lot of control that you would not want to bother with, quite frankly, if you are a casual gamer that's like, oh, I can play old games on this. I think you're going to look at this and actually be a little bit overwhelmed. And like I said before, the fact that these come with hundreds of games already on it, it makes it really difficult to navigate to the games that you actually want to play, considering that they offer the European version, the US version, the Japanese version, and the very first thing that I would want to do is just go in here and delete almost everything on here, except for the games that I knew that I actually wanted to play. It's really difficult to navigate. The search function is really, really clunky. It's something that I would not uh, just pick up for a friend that enjoys old video games unless you know that they really know their stuff. I think that these devices do have some merit, especially as games are legitimately disappearing and there is no way to play some of the games that we have uh, ROM dumps for. And that is unfortunate because you want to be able to continue uh, to support the preservation of this stuff, but if it's not happening, then your options are essentially being self-limited. I hope you enjoyed uh, my look at this device. I think that it is certainly something that I will continue to mess around with, but it has left me wanting something a bit different. Uh, as I mentioned, the button placement on the back just doesn't quite feel right. Uh, how the uh, operating systems are set up is not as clean as I think it needs to be. Like, some effort went into this, but it's also pretty clear that corners were cut in others. And that does begin to show within, I would say, the first few hours of its use. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider uh, supporting the channel over here, and I'll leave a, a few links to some other videos that you might enjoy as well. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.